Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. Let's dive into pneumonia. No doubt, you'll see this all over board exams in both inpatient and outpatient settings. That's because it's common in and outside the hospital, and it can be very serious or even fatal. This sketch is going to cover the presentation and workup of pneumonia in the immunocompetent adult patient. Check out our upcoming video on pneumonia in the immunocompromised patient for that side of the story. This story, on the other hand, takes place far, far away. 20,000 leagues, to be exact. Pneumonia is typically broken down by where the infection came from. Community-acquired pneumonia, often abbreviated CAP, basically means pneumonia not acquired in the hospital. In fact, in case you can't tell, we are leagues away from the nearest hospital, with Captain Pneumo and his crew. Of the innumerable microbes out in the community, there's a relatively small group that accounts for most pneumonias. They're mainly comprised of bacteria and respiratory viruses. We'll also discuss a few endemic fungal pathogens that infect immunocompetent individuals. Keep in mind, however, that no pathogen is detected in about half of cases. So mysterious. Additionally, in an upcoming sketch, we'll discuss pneumonia in the immunocompromised patient. We'll encounter all kinds of strange fungi, parasites, and even a few bacterial and viral zebras. All right, let's introduce the microbes commonly associated with CAP. First up, we've got the so-called typical bacteria. Streptococcus pneumoniae, a gram-positive bacteria, is the most common bacterial cause of CAP, and will be symbolized by the stripy pneumatic suit with infiltrating rusty lung spots. Remember, that's purple for gram-positive. Another common bacterium is Haemophilus influenzae, or H-flu for short, represented, as always, by an H-themed biplane. Red for gram-negative. CAP is less commonly caused by Moraxella cateralis, embodied by this kind of freaky-looking moray cat eel. Again, red for gram-negative. Staph aureus, that good old gram-positive coccyx that seems to get everywhere, is also a less common, though important, cause of CAP. It's symbolized here by the golden staff. Nice find. All four of these bugs are common bacterial causes of eye, ear, and respiratory tract infections. Notice this, well, typical-looking fish floating on by. Just a typical day doing the typical fish things that typical fish do. The term typical here doesn't necessarily mean the most common. It's more of a classic designation relating to the fact that these bacteria are easily gram-stained and cultured, and are generally sensitive to beta-lactam antibiotics. Pfft, typical. Next up, it's the atypical bacteria. The most common of the atypicals is Mycoplasma pneumoniae, a teeny tiny bacterium with no cell wall, which means it's resistant to beta-lactams and can't be stained. It's symbolized here by this weathered sign that now reads myco instead of my gold. Mycoplasma is a common bacterial cause of both upper and lower respiratory tract infections. Next is Chlamydia pneumoniae, an obligate intracellular bacterium also associated with upper and lower respiratory tract infections. It's symbolized by a chlamydia clam. Because of its proteoglycan-poor cell wall and the fact that it likes to hide inside the cell, Chlamydia pneumoniae is relatively resistant to beta-lactams and not easily stained or cultured. Keep in mind that these bugs are dubbed atypical not because they're rare, but because they have resistance to beta-lactams, can't be cultured using traditional approaches, and aren't seen very well on gram stain. They're just atypical. Kinda like this derpy-looking fish over here. Our third big group of pathogens that cause CAP is respiratory viruses including influenza A and B, parainfluenza viruses, RSV, and adenovirus. The most clinically significant virus of the bunch is influenza, represented here by the influenza flying fish. Remember that respiratory viruses can cause a primary viral pneumonia or predispose the patient to a secondary bacterial pneumonia. We'll remind you later, don't worry. Fungi are a much less common cause of CAP in immunocompetent patients. These bugs are often associated with specific exposures, such as time spent in endemic areas. Although usually asymptomatic, the endemic mycoses, such as histoplasmosis, coccidiomycosis, and blastomycosis also have the potential to cause acute lung infection. These and other fungi are also important players in the setting of pneumonia in immunocompromised patients. But we'll get to that in a future sketch. But before we dive into the clinical presentation and workup, I want to introduce the other big category, 
nosocomial pneumonia, or pneumonia that's acquired in a healthcare setting. When patients are admitted to the hospital, they get exposed to a whole new world of pneumonia-causing bugs. So the epidemiology is slightly different than in the community. Nosocomial pneumonia is divided into hospital-acquired pneumonia, abbreviated HAP, and ventilator-associated pneumonia, also called VAP. For pneumonia to qualify as HAP, it must have an onset more than 48 hours after hospital admission. That means no signs of incubating infection at the time of admission. Similarly, to qualify as VAP, patients need to develop the pneumonia more than 48 hours after endotracheal intubation. HAP and VAP are caused by a variety of organisms and can even be polymicrobial. Let this school of bubbly, red, rod-shaped fish swimming by the medical quarters of the ship represent the common aerobic gram-negative bacilli, including Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Klebsiella pneumoniae, Enterobacter and Acinobacter species, and E. coli.